What's up Cozy Gamers? I want to first apologize that I'm a bit behind on this video. I got nerfed IRL by bronchitis, but I'm slowly getting back on the up and up. During my downtime, I was able to jump into the full release of Fay Farm after having played an early access copy, and I wanted to make a video about it. At first, I planned to make two, a tips and trick video and a review video, but I've decided the heck with it. Let's combine them. So today, I'm going to share 20 plus epic tips and tricks with you while also giving my opinions about Fay Farm and why you have to play it. Let's get started. Starting off, I want to talk about exploration and discovery. In Fay Farm, you can run, swim, jump, and eventually even fly. This allows you a lot of opportunities to search high and low for secrets. Be sure to use whirlpools and mushrooms to help you reach greater heights, because you never know what you'll find. Which leads us to tip number one. Fay Farm has a lot of recipes to find out in the open, inside buildings, and even in some hidden places. I don't want to spoil all the locations, but be sure to check behind waterfalls and other objects like trees and rocks. Just keep an eye on the investigate prompt. The next tip is also related to recipes. There will be some recipes that will be seemingly out of reach for early game players, but what if I told you that there's a way to get them from as early as chapter one? If you see a recipe in an inaccessible area, just jump around it until you see the investigate prompt. You may have to try a few times and have quick reflexes, but I promise you that you'll be able to get them even without actually touching them. Now, if you're like me, you get lost easily. In time, you'll definitely memorize the map and even unlock quick travel points, but don't forget that you have a tracker at your disposal in the meantime. Open up your map, click on a location, and then choose a character to track. Once you do so, you'll have an icon connected to a line that will always face the direction you need to go in. It's super useful. Oh, and if you're ever stuck while out exploring, just open your menu and select the Help I'm Stuck button. This will get you out of whatever pinch you're in. Let's make our way to our homestead, shall we? There's a lot you can do on your farm, and that means lots of tips. Before I get into those, though, I want to take a moment to gush about something that I really love about this game. Intuitive gameplay and design. Fate Farm has this in spades. For the most part, the game mechanics are all easy to understand and use. For example, the auto tool system. All farm tools will be automatically equipped when you approach the object they're used for. What do I mean by this? Well, if you approach a tree and press the action button, your character will automatically use the axe. Approach a rock, your character will use the pickaxe. All this without having to cycle through tools. It's really awesome. You still have to cycle for fishing, bug catching, and fighting, but to have this system for the farming tools is such a game changer in my opinion. The tools also don't take up inventory space. Speaking of tools, be sure to do a lot of exploring and forging in the mines to gather material necessary to upgrade them. Doing so will unlock magical abilities starting from level 3, which make performing tasks much easier and a lot flashier. How cool is this? Now that I've gushed, let's get into what you can do on your homestead. On your homestead, you can clear out your land, grow crops, build crafters, raise pets, and more. All of this takes time and energy, of course, but what if I told you there's a day one exploit? Well, here I am telling you exactly that. On day one, your energy meter, as well as the time, never runs out. That means you can do as much as you want without worry. Search for all the recipes, clear out as much of your land as you can, catch bugs and fish, and forage and level up your individual skills for said categories. Doing so early on will give you incredible buffs up to level 20 that will serve you well as you go through the rest of the game. Also, keep in mind that some items are locked away until you reach certain skill levels, so definitely make sure you're leveling them up evenly across the board. I want to quickly point out, since I mentioned it briefly, that there are a lot of forageable materials around the map that may seem very unassuming, such as the tea leaves and berries. I swear, during my early access playthrough, I had no idea that they could be picked. I thought they were just background dressing. Basically, anytime you see the square cursor appear, you can use your action button to interact with them. These are really important early game, as they can be used for food, for cooking and energy, but also to sell and make money. Now let's get into each individual activity you can do at your homestead. 
First, farming of course. The farming in Fey Farm is really easy and familiar if you've played other farming simulators, but there are definitely some nice additions I'd like to teach you about. First, did you know that you can move individual pieces of your soil and flower beds even if they have something planted in them? This is super useful for convenience sake, but also if you make a mistake when placing flowers for crossbreeding like me. Additionally, this is one of the things I think is so cool about Fey Farm. You can eventually gain access to seasonal soils that allow you to grow crops regardless of whether they're in season or not. Keep an eye out for special fertilizers too, which can be purchased from Holly in the town center. Bounteous fertilizer, which increases crop yield, zippy fertilizer, which speeds up grow time, and magic crop swap fertilizer, try saying that three times fast, which changes crops into other crops depending on the season or location. Be sure to try them out. Another quick little tip for farming, although you can fill up your watering can at multiple wells placed around the land, you can also do so by swimming. Now that you have all these crops, you should get to cooking. One thing that I'm happy to report is that cooking, as well as crafting, can be done directly from your storage. No need to have the ingredients on hand. And speaking of crafting, crafting does not require a crafting bench or station. It can be done at any time or place as long as you're within your homestead. These are incredible quality of life additions that I feel are important to point out. Speaking of storage, don't be worried about loading it up. Some items that would normally stack to 10 or 100 in your pockets can actually stack to 999 in your storage. I'm not quite sure why, but it's super useful and gives you a lot of playroom for grinding materials. And on the crafting, there are definitely some important things to talk about. First, let's talk about the carpets. In Fey Farm, carpets, as well as soil beds outside your house, are crafted in one by one pieces. This allows you to lay them out in any shape you want. I love it so much. However, once they're placed, they can't be moved easily, so you'll have to use my next tip. All craftable items in Fey Farm can be reclaimed. What does that mean? It means you can break them down and regain all the materials used to make them in the first place. Not some materials, all. This is huge, and I wish I saw this in more Life Sims games, to be honest. There's also the customization mirror that can be crafted after finding the recipe near the hammock to the left of your home. This mirror allows you to redo any customization choices you made at the start of the game, including your voice, pronouns, and anything else. Oh, and furniture doesn't exist just to look nice. No, no. Fey Farm is another incredible mechanic in which furniture buffs your character. If you look at the tab called Cozy Furniture in crafting mode, you'll notice small symbols in the upper corner in red, green, and blue. These correspond to your health bar, energy bar, and mana bar, respectively. The more cozy furniture you place in your house, the more your bars will increase in size, allowing you to do more and more each day, especially in the mines. I love how this will incentivize players who aren't normally into interior design. Speaking of the mines, Fey Farm has a mining system similar to what we've seen in Stardew Valley. You make your way through the mines, going deeper and deeper while fighting enemies and mining for valuable resources. Fey Farm, however, puts some unique spins on it. First of all, make sure you're taking notes of all the oysters scattered around the mines. They might not give you much energy, but they're plentiful and will allow you to extend your trip in the mines if you didn't bring enough food. Fey Farm will actually notify you when your energy is low, by the way, and even more conveniently, prompts you with a simple button press to eat something in your pockets. You'll also notice while down there that each floor has a strange mechanism at the start. These are quick travel spots that allow you to access individual floors in the mines. All you'll need is a seal crafting station and the necessary materials to make seals. Each set of four floors uses the same seal and you must unlock them in order, meaning you can't unlock level 2's quick point until you unlock level 1. You can also use seals to unlock quick travel spots outside the mines too. One really interesting thing to point out about unlocking the quick travel spots in the mines is that doing so will automatically unlock the door to the next level as well, meaning once you unlock a seal, you'll no longer have to search for the door switch. While in the mines, you'll find tons of resources including gems like Peridot and Citrine. You'll notice, however, that they're called Rough. Well, there is a crafting station you can make called a Gem Polisher, which allows you to put 10 rough gems in to make one refined gem. The refined gems sell for a decent amount of money, so this is a good way to make cash early on. And if you want to know which materials are on which floor and what the chances of finding them are, check out the dungeon tracker in the menu. It's a super useful tool that lets you look at all the floors you've visited so far and the chance you have to find specific materials on each one. I don't know if I've ever seen something like this in a life sims before to be honest, but I love it. 
Now onto the cute animals. On your farm, you can raise an assortment of cute critters such as chikus and cottontails. They will normally wander about outside on nice days, but if you craft an animal lore, it will ensure the animals don't stray too far, making it much easier for you to pet them and brush them each day. There's another critter-related construction called the Lowlands Critter Conservatory, which allows you to temporarily store critters caught with your net until they eventually run off, leaving behind special materials and items that can be used for crafting. This includes critters like frogs, butterflies, crabs, and more. I personally wish it was something in which I could permanently store my critters and look at them though. I mean, look how cute the frogs are! So before you go off and sell all your catches, consider giving the Lowlands Critter Conservatory a go. Oh, it's getting late. I see it's dark out now. Well, no worries, because there are two fun things to point out once the sun goes down. I'm sure you'll notice while exploring at night that there are these mysterious green glowing orbs around. These are energy orbs. If you touch them, they'll replenish a small amount of your energy. I guess the game figures that by the end of the day, you'll be a little low. But if you're out too late, the game will force you back to your home and tuck you in. The nice thing though, the game doesn't punish you for not going to bed on your own. You won't lose money or wake up with less energy the next day like we've seen in games like Stardew. Fay Farm luckily takes it easy on us night owls. And those are all the tips I have so far, but I'm still early in the game so maybe I'll make another video in the future. Huge shout out to my Twitch community who shared some of these tips with me in the first place. As you can probably tell from this video, I really do love Fay Farm. It's cute, has lots of customization, including pronouns, has familiar fun mechanics that I love, but puts a spin on a lot of them with incredible UI and quality of life additions, and allows you to play with up to three friends. If I had to share any negatives I have, it would be these two things. One, the villager dialogue is very repetitive. It's not like other games in which characters repeat their dialogue, but it's at least unique to them. No, in Fae Farm, a lot of the characters have the same dialogue. So you hear the same exact thing multiple times from multiple different characters. I'm telling you that the dialogue got noticeably repetitive from day one. Second, although I love the tool wheel, you cannot forage items if you have the bug net, fishing rod, or magic staff equipped. Probably because picking up shares the same button, but I feel like they could remap that. Tons of Life Sims games allow you to pick up stuff regardless of what you're holding. But really guys, that's it, at least so far. I don't really have any other complaints, but maybe the two listed are deal breakers for you. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, both positive and negative, in the comments below. Did you buy the game already? Are you planning on it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially if you have tips that I missed. If you liked today's video and would like to see more cozy gaming content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, like the video, and as I already said, leave a comment. It helps so much in getting my videos into YouTube algorithms good graces. And if you'd like to see me play cozy games live, check me out over on Twitch where I stream three times a week. All my socials will be in the description box below. Until next time, cozy gamers, stay cute.